Well, on chapel on February the 8th, 10 a.m., the pastor who spoke that morning felt like he did an ordinary job. He would say himself that it wasn't special, it wasn't earth-shaking. Nevertheless, students lingered after chapel, maybe a couple of dozen to start with. By mid-afternoon on February the 8th, there were several hundred students coming back into Hughes Auditorium, the site of the chapel services at Asbury University. How did students know that something was happening? Texting began almost immediately. Students remaining in Hughes were sharing with other students that something extraordinary was happening in terms of lingering to pray. Uh, also, members of the gospel choir, a few stayed and sang. Um, students began to text off campus and before the afternoon was over, there were students coming from the University of Kentucky and other bluegrass, bluegrass uh, colleges and universities. And by the next day, uh, we're not talking about scores or dozens, we're talking about many hundreds. And in a matter of a couple of days, we're talking about thousands of people. And then in less than a week, we're talking about tens of thousands. So spiritually speaking, something snowballed. And I think the best explanation for it may be a deep hunger in the land, maybe in the globe, for something genuine, something real, something of heart substance, spiritually speaking. And before it was over, estimates are that 50 to 70,000 people may have come to Wilmore in those 16 days. Well, I think definitely social media is one of the unique features. Some have argued, and I think it's accurate, that this may be the first spiritual renewal of consequence in the digital age, in the age of social media. I mentioned earlier that from the first day there was texting which spread the word. And then if I could share a few statistics, let me back up and say that not only the communications office at Asbury collected statistics on social media, but also there was a professor in the communications department at Asbury University who actually was teaching a course on social media the spring semester of 2023. And I had an interview with her, uh, learned a great deal. She did a phenomenal job of tracking social media. And I'd like to share just a couple of statistics that I think really bring it home. Um, I've got a few of those numbers with me if I could share them. Uh, YouTube had 6.3 million views in February of 2023 regarding the Asbury revival. Uh, the Asbury University Facebook page had a reach in the days of the 16 days of the revival of over 15 million. And the most astounding statistic from my mind was what happened with TikTok. There were 10 million views on February the 9th. That's one day into this outpouring. And by April 6, the number was 241 million. Just astounding figures in terms of the spread of the word about the revival. There were 40 countries at least represented. 40 states were represented. We know of 279 colleges and universities that had students coming to Asbury. So that definitely was a unique feature of the outpouring. Uh, another unique feature to my mind was the backstory, I call it. What was happening to allow this to continue, especially in the dimensions that I've just described. Prayer was a phenomenal feature of the revival. And mind you, this is all put together on the fly. That's a phrase that was used. Um, 
what I mean is that there was no possibility for planning and provisioning ahead of time because it was spontaneous, it was unscripted, it was unscheduled. Nevertheless, people came forward. The estimate for the number of volunteers in those 16 days is 1,500 to 1,800. My wife and I were two of that huge number for a few days. And people were volunteering in all manner of ways. Uh, volunteering in terms of bringing food to campus, um, in terms of checking bags as people entered Hughes Auditorium, providing water down the extremely long lines of people waiting to enter Hughes Auditorium. I mentioned prayer. There were counselors that needed training. Hundreds of people uh, went through a two-hour refresher course and training in how to help with people at the altar. There was an intercessory prayer room. Um, there was a consecration room where anyone going on the stage, on the platform, either to speak or to be part of a music team, uh, was prayed over for an hour, sometimes more, before they went on the platform. Um, I love to tell the story that came out of an interview with President Timothy Tennant of the seminary. He said on one occasion, a woman from the community came into the administration building at the seminary, which is just across the street from Hughes Auditorium. This is a woman who had never had a connection with either Asbury University or Asbury Seminary. Kind of amazing for a small town of 6,000, but that's what she shared with Dr. Tennant. And she showed up on campus with her vacuum cleaner. And she said, what can I do to help? And Dr. Tennant took her down the hall to Estes Chapel, one of the overflow venues for worship during the outpouring. And this lady volunteered her time to sweep the floors and the carpets in Estes Chapel. Um, another story I love to tell, a lady from Indianapolis heard about the outpouring. She baked chocolate chip cookies all day long one day. She drove four hours to Wilmore, Kentucky. The crowds were so enormous, there was no place to park. She parked probably between a quarter and a half mile from the campus and she had a cart and she delivered those chocolate chip cookies to the campus. People were just bringing food. People were bringing pallets of water from Costco and Sam's Club in Lexington. Just anything that could be done to help. The provisioning and the protection were really uh, another miracle. There were, there were the miracles at the altar, but there were also the backstory miracles of people wanting to do what they could to support and protect and provision the outpouring. Well, I think there are two basic definitions for revival. Both have been used historically. One is simply a scheduled series of meetings in which a pastor or a guest preacher shares with the congregation. That really was formative in my own family. My grandmother was deeply moved by a revival service of the scheduled kind, and she actually ended up moving her family from southeast Kentucky to Wilmore so that her children could go to Asbury College, and that included my aunt and my mother who graduated from Asbury as a result, really of that revival. The same is the case with my wife's family in western Pennsylvania. Her parents were converted to the Lord in a Methodist revival service and they had a pastor who was from Asbury and he wanted his children and he wanted members of his congregation to consider coming to Asbury because they knew that revival was taken seriously there. So those are scheduled revival events but Historically, there have been times when there have been spontaneous revivals, both at Asbury College and at other locations. I taught at Wheaton for a number of years, and it was very interesting in 
encouraging to see, to see in 1995 a spontaneous revival at Wheaton College, which was very similar in a number of respects to what I had observed, for example, at the 1970 revival, at which point I was a graduate of the college but was nearby in my first year of graduate school at the University of Kentucky. Now in terms of other terms, um, a number come to mind, awakening, outpouring, uh, spiritual refreshment or refreshing, revitalization, renewal, and of course revival. And theologians and church historians often will want to dissect these terms, parse them, um, and that's fine. But I think for laity, for the most part, all these terms are pretty much interchangeable. And after all, I'm not particularly interested in getting into long discussions, differentiating one from the other among these terms. I'm just grateful that God does a great work in people's hearts, whatever you want to call it. Gen Z faces so many challenges that I think those of us of older generations sometime are not aware of how stressful the last few years have been. The most obvious illustration of this, of course, is COVID. Both at the high school and the college level, students have been stressed by having to dispense with in-person classes, um, doing online education is a wonderful thing, but it also can be off-putting, especially if people are not used to it. There can be a sense of isolation, and that's a problem. Um, let me share an experience I had that also explains the stresses that Gen Z face. In January, this past 2023 January, I attended an African American church breakfast on the date of the Martin Luther King holiday. And I sat at a breakfast table with Pastor Daniel Lee. He owns several branches of a counseling service in Lexington, Louisville, Georgetown, Kentucky, has a staff of several dozen. And we had a wonderful conversation. And the last question I asked Pastor Daniel was, what has changed more than anything else in your decades as a Christian counselor? And he immediately said, it's the heightened sense of anxiety. When I got back to the Asbury campus, I had a conversation with Chaplain Greg Hasseloff, good friend of mine. I mentioned this conversation I'd had with Pastor Daniel Lee and his response about anxiety. And Greg immediately responded, exactly, that is a key to the challenge that Gen Z faces right now. And there are other aspects of it, family problems, depression, um, self-harm, uh, thoughts of suicide. All of these things collectively have meant that students of this generation just have a lot on their shoulders. When the students came to the altar in the revival, one of the evidences of the work of the Spirit was the delivery of anxiety, and not 100%, of course, but one of the beauties, and one of the evidences of this being a real revival, a genuine outpouring of the Holy Spirit and His work on the campus at Asbury University and Seminary was the fact that so many students didn't see the need the spring semester of 2023 to schedule counseling appointments. Counseling appointments on the campus were down 80% in spring 2023. Well, I think there'd be a lot more humility, a lot more selflessness. These were characteristics of what we saw in the Asbury outpouring. People weren't interested in drawing attention to themselves. And I think that's really a recipe for a stronger home, a stronger church, and a stronger nation. If we're less centered on self-absorption and we're more centered on how we can serve others 
which of course is what the Lord wants of us. He wants us to love him. He wants us to love our neighbor. And our neighbor is anybody in need, not just the person next door. So I think these are great, wonderful things that can come out of this outpouring if people take those to heart.